Hello guys and welcome to another video of my sample modeling product review series. Today we're going to look at another package which is the soprano and bass clarinet. Now this is very easy again you can buy and download it from the sample modeling site samplemodeling.com you can get it there and then you can install it on your computer it's really easy you can just download it follow the instructions and you have it on your computer in no time we're going to look at the instrument now uh, I've loaded two instances here uh, what these things are I'm going to explain to you later because I want to showcase how it sounds in a recording first of all if you download and install the instrument just like uh, I told you before with the instructions then you come to this thing here this is the swam engine this is a proprietary engine of sample modeling it's used in most of their instruments which is really cool because many libraries these days they work in the contact player which I love because it makes it easy to use you just load them into your contact player and you're good to go uh, some libraries come with their own engines for the better or the worse some are really good and some are not so good and the swam engine really is great because it does a great job on, on the on you know simulating the instrument it's really impeccable uh, it never crashed on me actually it allows you to tweak a lot of things but while still maintaining the easy interface I mean you have libraries that let you tweak you every little bit but it's so complicated that you need like hours to figure out how it works and I really hate that I mean I love tweaking and working around a little bit and get the sound and, and everything that I want but I don't want to spend three hours just to get one note out of an instrument that sounds halfway decent uh, that way I just get you know I get bored and I get worked up uh, still has to be inspiring and that is what the swam engine does so uh, to play the instrument like in the previous videos you can use just a keyboard or you can use uh, a breath controller what I do uh, I just made uh, a video by the way on the new breath controller that's the BBC the breath and bike control I'm going to use this one and I think for all the wind and also brass instruments I think the best thing you can get is a wind controller which is some kind of a generic um, rebuild of a wind instrument it looks a little bit like a clarinet to me I don't know if that's accurate but uh, it actually it plays and it operates just like a, a wind instrument so I guess that would be the best solution to have and I've heard some examples on YouTube and it sounds really good and absolutely realistic but since I don't play brass or wind instruments I'm just going to use the breath controller and my keyboard but that's enough for me because you can get really great sounds out of that so, uh, and this also brings me to the point why you can't see me this time. Uh, you've seen me operating my system uh, many times now in different videos. And this time I'm going to focus uh, on the, you know, on the, on the window. Uh, also to show you a little bit of the swarm engine and everything. I'm just going to take you right through it. So first thing you see is a warning sign, but don't get worried right now because it's very easy. It says that you have to provide an expression controller. So if you just put a note on a keyboard, it does nothing but giving the input of the note, but not of the expression itself. So whatever expression you use, CC11 or CC2 or whatever it is, you must send some expression data first, be it the breath controller, the wind controller, pedal, or whatever you're physically using. If you use the sequencer only, do everything with mouse, you must run the track briefly to send some CC data. So this is for avoiding using the instrument without expression because then it sounds artificial, okay? Now this is really great and easy. You can go here, you can find a load button, and there you can see the keyboard control setup, the wind control setup, and the breath control setup. Since I use a breath control, I'm gonna load that, and I'm already good to go. So that's so easy and cool to use. And now I'm just going to go ahead and play a few notes for you, just the way it comes when you load it. That was just playing straightforward without any effects or uh, the mod wheel or anything. And I'm going to show a little more details. Uh, I'm going to play a few notes using the mod wheel. Now, never forget about that because the mod wheel is so important. The mod wheel controls the vibrato, which just adds 
so much life to the instrument. Um, it really makes the instrument come alive and talk, actually. So I'm going to play a few notes using that. Now this is another window that you will find on this, in the Swarm engine. This is the options window and there you can see all the things that you can tweak. Everything. You can tweak the vibrato rate, you can tweak expressions, you can tweak all the effects here. Uh, you can see the CC commands, what they are assigned to. And you heard me talking about the breath and bite controller before. And this is really cool to play. Now if, for example, I say I'm going to assign the CC command from flutter tongue to the bite CC expression. This is CC number three. I can bite my breath controller and it does the flutter. It sounds like that. Okay, that's that. So you, you, you can really see that um, it does a great job on itself without you doing much. Um, for example, also if you blow the breath controller very hard, it does the overblow thing. You basically, you can do everything here. And also the built-in reverb is quite great. Now, um, if I turn it up a little bit, it gets it sounds even better. Let me play a little bit for you. That's uh, the clarinet, the soprano clarinet. Now the bass clarinet works similar. You know, it's just uh, it's the same things that you can tweak and do around here. Just it's uh, a bass clarinet, so it's meant for bass stuff. <laughs> Now, uh, if you uh, bring up the the reverb time or the reverb mix a little bit, it sounds even better because usually instruments in recording setup have a little bit of reverb. I'm going to show you this instrument featured as solo instruments, so to speak. And uh, I just quickly put together a track here. It's uh, a passage of Shostakovich's Waltz Number no. 2. If you're not so savvy with uh, classical music, don't worry. You get the hang of what I mean anyway. And you will maybe even recognize the tune because it's quite a famous tune. I'm going to mute most of the instruments. I'm just going to have the piano the pizzicatos, yeah, maybe the timpani, the glockenspiel, and yeah, that's it. I've also already prepared the instruments as audio files, I've played them before, uh, just, you know, safety measure in case I suck completely playing it live. So uh, we're just going to quickly check out how this sounds, as it is.
this is just the way I played it with the breath controller, the keyboard, and the mod wheel. So uh, now usually I do a little bit of fine work, uh, a little bit of tweaking, and that stuff, and then it sounds really, really fabulous. Okay, but for now, to show you the final results, so to speak, uh, we're going to mute the two recordings that we just did because uh, they've not been perfect and I have not worked on anything, you know, I did no fine tuning and stuff, uh, but I did the record. That was just to show you, you know, how I do it live and how it sounds when it's played. Of course, that's not perfect, but yesterday I did the recording and did a lot of tweaking and uh, polishing and stuff, and so you can listen to the final results, so to speak. So thanks very much for tuning in, for watching this video. I hope you tune in next time when we're going to look at the double reads. Now, let the music talk. Bye-bye. Thank you.